Hi everybody, all my followers. Um, welcome to another video. Uh, right, so I um, I just came off night, so I'm a little bit tired, but uh, but I hope uh, I can make this video making some sense. So this car uh, is a Vauxhall Vectra 2007 with a 1.9 diesel engine and. Um, what I know about this car is that uh, the original engine uh, just packed up, I believe, just broken, don't know what happened, and they just put another engine. And since they put the new engine, uh, let's, let, let's gonna go call new to the second hand engine, yeah? So since they put the new engine, uh, it never started. Um, so, uh, so it never started. Um, what else? Uh, they have. Uh, I've been told they have because they couldn't start the engine. They took all the sensors that came with the new engine. Um, they took them all off and they put all the sensors that were on the old engine. Uh, still make no difference. Uh, the engine uh, still not starting. And the first thing we're going to do. Um, which I did already, but I'm just gonna show you. So, this is actually the. Let me close the door, see if it makes. Uh, let me turn the key on. So, the codes um, that we have on here. Are the following. Okay, so as you can see, there's all that. As you can see, there is only one code uh, that actually says uh, present. Uh, catalyst temperature sensor, circuit one, bank two. Uh, not really worry with that. The car should start even with that uh, code in there. Uh, for now, and all I've been asked to look at is start the engine. That's it. Um, the one that I think, uh, because it's not showing present now, because ignition has been off and we haven't attempted to start the engine yet since the last cycle, but is in there, I think that's the one that's gonna prevent the car from start. Uh, that one would as well, but, well, I'm gonna, it's a better thing is to show you actually. So let's gonna go back. It's gonna attempt to start the engine and you're gonna see exactly what happens. Okay, so you've seen you crank, it kind of wants to fire, but then it just stops. So if we go now, read the codes. So as you can see, that uh, rail pressure sensor, that high pressure, it just becomes present. Okay, we still have that one, but that one, like I said, it, it won't prevent the engine from start, but this one will. All the other ones, they carry on saying not present, so I could delete them and they wouldn't come back. But this is the one that now is present because uh, obviously he's on this ignition cycle. Uh, so that's the one. So let's gonna go on the live data. I'm gonna prep everything and then I will come back and show you. Let's gonna look on the live data, see if this is actually a true reading, at least on the live data. Okay, so I had to move the machine because of the glare, but hopefully uh, should be okay here. So what we have here, uh, we have a, a merged graphic with the desired uh, common rail pressure and uh, with the common rail fuel pressure, which is the measured pressure. Uh, also, uh, right at the bottom, we have the rail pressure control solenoid valve. Uh, so this valve is the... So let, let's gonna just quick um, um, establish what 
are we looking at here? So this graphic is basically uh, showing me the pressure that is being read from the sensor at the end of the common rail. Okay, we can have that sensor faulty. We, we, we're going to have to establish that uh, uh, later. But um, this is the reading that the fuel pressure sensor is giving us. So the top number there, uh, desired common, so is asking for 29.97, so pretty much 30 um, MPAs. Um, and that, that's basically 300 bars, okay? Give or take. Um, common rail fuel pressure, that's the pressure that the sensor is reading at the moment. 0 0.43, so that's pretty much no pressure in there. <laughs> uh, down here on these two, we have the rail pressure control solenoid valve. This valve is in this system is the valve that is uh, behind the uh, the high pressure fuel pump. So it's basically a solenoid, which is a kind of uh, how to put it across. It's like a, a valve. It's like a it's like a bypass valve that when it opens will allow diesel to move to come out to not go into the to the common rail so that's the way it is a power modulator valve so uh, or a pulse a pulse uh, uh, with modulator valve so basically it's a valve that pulls very quick uh, or the the engine uh, ECU will pulse that valve very quick and by doing it it can control the the pressure inside the common rail so that's the way it works. Uh, so obviously we're going to look at this graphic here. And what we don't want to see is the green line. Uh, yeah, is the green line to go above the blue line. And down here we should see some values here. So we should see the percentage. So um, I'm going to interrupt it. Sorry about that. So is the... So where I was, I was here, yeah. So here we should see the percentage at which the valve has been pulsed. Uh, and that is just the current uh, that uh, the amperage that that valve is actually um, taking. So we should see some values there and we should see on the graphic. So I'm going to turn the key off, cycle the key, otherwise it won't try nothing. And we're going to crank. Okay, so there we go. So as you've seen... Um, there is a. I'm gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna try again. Okay, so I'm gonna pause this somewhere here. So first thing you've seen underneath on the. What I was to say uh, on the amps on the the percentage and. Uh, Sorry, guys, just got interrupted again. Um, anyway, uh, what I was... Uh, what I was... Uh, okay, so... First uh, thing um, uh, you probably have seen, if not, just go back and see while I was cranking the engine, that uh, the the valve uh, percentage uh, didn't move, uh, didn't come out from zero, and uh, the amps didn't come out from zero as well. So it's like if the valve has not been activated at all. Saying that... You can see it here, as I said, the green line should not go above the blue line. So, because the blue line is the pressure that we are trying to have in the common rail, and that's the actual pressure. So, as soon as you crank, the pressure builds up inside the, the, the fuel rail. Uh, at this point here, where these two lines meet, is roughly where the engine tries to fire. But then, because the pressure just carry on going up, the ECU detects that. And obviously it just says it's too much pressure and I'm not going to start the engine and deactivate the injectors. And obviously it, the engine doesn't start. I stop cranking and the pressure just slowly starts to decrease. So looking at this graphic, I would say the sensor, the pressure sensor, uh, uh, is actually reading okay. What I think, with, what I think the problem is going to be is going to be in, uh, actually on the regulation uh, of the fuel rail pressure. So that's what we're going to look at. I'm going to try to understand if it's a faulty sensor that we have in there, uh, or if it's a wire problem, or whatever it might be. So let's go and investigate and try to see if we find out what the problem is. Uh, 
Okay guys, so problem solved. So I'm gonna show you. Okay. So, basically, <laughs> silly thing, but uh, well, like I do, everybody does mistakes sometimes. Um, so when I start to follow these diagrams, uh, the wires from that sensor from that sensor, from that uh, solenoid, they were not going to the right place in the ECU. So, <laughs> I've started to put everything back on, but uh, I had the ECU out, and um, I was measuring the, 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 the wires from, obviously from the plug to the solenoid, to the pressure regulator, whatever you want to call it, uh, to here, and they were going to a different place. Um, so when I start to trace them down, Guys, what they did was, it was a, well, basically, this plug here, which is now the correct one, it fits, or is a very similar plug as this one. And all they did, this is the one for the catalytic uh, temperature sensor, the fault that was in there, that is not there anymore. So this plug was actually connected to the regulator. And this, the, the the plug from the regulator was connected to the sensor, so that was why the engine was not starting. So, uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, it took me some time to obviously to figure out. Uh, maybe someone with a little bit more experience would look at those plugs out and and would figure out straight away was the wrong plug. Um, uh, I didn't. I've just follow. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I've just followed the, the the diagrams and 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 stuff like that. And uh, I ended I ended up by actually tracing back the right plug. So so that's what they did. Um, they basically um, they basically connected the wrong plug in the wrong place. And obviously the engine uh, would not start. Um, car is running, as you can see, and uh, and that's it, guys. I know I haven't showed you anything very interesting. Uh, I think the main lesson here is the main the main lesson here is um, when you swap an engine, make sure you connect everything uh, back to the right place. Uh, otherwise, you can be left with something like this. Um, that's it, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, any questions or comments, put them below. And like always, uh, thank you for watching.